Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, it's very different because I have a special guest with me. I actually came up to visit Ange for the weekend and we thought we'd film a video about our worst money mistakes. Worst money mistakes. In our 20s. So before we get started, Ange, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. So hi, everyone. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> hi, uh, so I'm Ange. I am a money coach and I help women to start investing so they can reach financial independence. And I'm so happy to have you here in my home. I hope you've been having a nice time so far. No, it's been great. <laughs> so let's get straight into it. We want to talk about our money mistakes and... Who wants to go first? You go first. Okay. <laughs> so one of the biggest mistakes I made, definitely in my 20s, was using my overdraft to pay for my holidays. So many of you will know that I was in debt, like I had my £16,000 worth of debt and that was the car loan that I had, but also the overdraft. But one of the things I didn't mention was the fact that the overdraft was partly used to fund my holidays so i don't know if you had any thoughts any initial thoughts about that was it worth it where did we go on holiday that's what I. so the holidays were actually very good i think i went to cancun that year <laughs> croatia later on went to barbados so bougie holidays they were bougie <laughs> holidays but it was with money that i didn't the money wasn't mine essentially <laughs> and it was a mistake because i didn't realize no i did realize that the overdraft would become so expensive after the cutoff point so at the end of the term the interest was going to start increasing a lot before it was interest free so i was like yeah free money let me go on holiday but i just didn't realize that that interest will keep increasing if I didn't pay off the overdraft. And luckily I did pay it off on, in time. But yeah, that was, a, that was a big thing for me. And I don't regret the holidays, but I regret how I paid for those holidays. Mm. That's what I would say. Yeah. And what was your favorite holiday that you went to in that time? My favorite holiday I would say was Barbados. Nice. That was really good, really fun. Did you see Rihanna? No, didn't see, <laughs> didn't see Rihanna. So that was my first mistake. What was yours? Um, so my first mistake was in my early 20s, um, I got a credit card, like most people As you do. do. Yeah, yeah. And my dad taught me to only spend money that I could afford on my credit card to increase my credit score, which I think mm -hmm. is really good advice. Like that's the only advice that my dad gave me about money. Um, and it's been very helpful. But one day I decided to uh, take money out of my credit card when I was Christmas shopping with my mum because I thought it was going to increase my credit score. Mm. So my credit score was actually okay at the time. I don't think there was any problem with it, but I was like, oh, just to get that extra boost, yeah. I'll take the money out and pay, pay it back. But what actually happened is I ended up paying a lot of fees back. Mm. And actually it doesn't look that good because if you're that desperate for cash that you're taking money out of your credit card versus using a debit card, yeah, I mean, the credit card companies, you know, didn't really increase my credit score. Yeah, that. That's how they see it. They're yeah. like, why are you now having to use money that's not yours to get cash out? Like, is there something wrong? Yeah, like, I'm the, I really need cash as yeah. well. Like, I can't yeah, just yeah, yeah. tap in somewhere. So, yeah, that was my first regret that I ever had with money. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever been scared of credit cards? Because I didn't get a credit card until I, like, was really good at money management because my mum had always said, like, don't ever get a credit card. Whatever you do, don't get a credit card. Yeah. So for me, like, I was scared of credit cards until I actually learned how to use a credit card properly. Did you ever have that mindset or were you? No. <laughs> no, my dad, no, seriously, my dad said to me, get a credit card. Wow. My dad has always said, get a credit card, build your credit score. Yeah. And he told me to get a freedom card, like a reward kind of card. So that's actually been good because I've been able mm. to get points for it. So he mm. was very much like, no, get a credit card and start spending a bit of money on it yeah. and paying it off. So as soon as I started my first job, um, my first proper job in my 20s, yeah, I was 22, mm. yeah, early 20s. Um, yeah, he told me to get a credit card. Yeah. So I was never, there's nothing to be scared of because I didn't really know much about credit cards and my dad is telling me, go do it. So I'm yeah. just listening to him. But you're also a natural saver, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. So you would have yeah, been fine. Yeah. Me, however, if you'd have given me a credit card, 
at that point back in like 2018 i i definitely would have been in credit card debt 100 mm. percent. i would not have used it the way i use my credit card now yeah exactly. I, it would have just been a mess okay let's talk about my second mistake and my second mistake was to also do with my debt and that was the fact that when i financed my car because i didn't have any savings i didn't buy my car in cash but when I financed my car, I didn't realize that I was paying over 11% in interest. What? Yeah, over 11%. And I didn't realize how high that was until I started learning about like money management and personal finance. And even when I started learning about investing, yeah. where they would be talking about like on average, you may get about 10% returns, you know, like eight to 10%. And then I'm like, here I am paying 11%. Like I can't even invest anything at all right now <laughs> because I'm paying such high interest yeah. on my car. Yeah. So yeah, that was a bit mad. I'm obviously I paid it off and I managed to pay it off. And because I paid it off so quickly, I didn't have to pay as much interest yeah. but still that was like a huge chunk of money at the time yeah. and that's the thing like when you do get like people financing cars they don't realize about yeah. the interest yeah. they think oh yeah i'm gonna get a new mercedes i'm gonna get a new audi but you're not actually thinking about the interest because you're so excited about the car yeah exactly what yeah. car did you get do you know what i didn't even <laughs> get a, i didn't even get like a really nice car i got a normal ford fiesta ford fiesta that's, that's all i got <laughs> it wasn't like a huge car but I don't know. The reason why I got the car was because I was working at the time and I was driving to work yeah, and yeah. I just felt really embarrassed with my old car because mm. I used to have like a banger that was a car that I bought in uni. Funnily oh. enough, I did pay in cash for that car. But because I just didn't like my car, I was like, oh no, I need to buy a new car because I'm a working girl now oh, because I've got a graduate job. Like people yeah. can't see me in this car anymore. But it wasn't like a, you know, really flashy car it was a fiesta i mean i would have stopped with a banger i think yeah a lot of run around that's what i had I for so long <laughs> but i would had that for quite a while as well okay fair. Fair. i think i've had that like for five years oh wow that's quite so a long time was, actually yeah, yeah it was it was coming to the end yeah but i just wish that i just didn't pay 11 percent interest I mean, it happens. That car. It happens, though. Yeah. So, what is your next mistake? All right. So, my next mistake is an investing mistake. Okay. <laughs> I love investing. It's all I talk about. But anyway, 100%. basically, I normally invest in index funds. Um, so, like, a load of different companies, basically, is what I invest in, rather than singular companies. Mm -hmm. And I decided that, you know, I like Etsy. So, I got married in 2021, and... Wait, fun, fun fact. Fun fact. We ended up getting married. On the same day. On the same day. We didn't know though. Yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> we had no idea. We were both out here getting married yeah, on the same day. We had day. no idea because we hadn't really known each other. Oh, we didn't really know each other like that. We didn't even know each other like that. Yeah, we just, I think we just about met each other yeah. online. And again, another fun fact is we met through a coach. The same coach. The same coach. But yeah, we didn't realise. We, we didn't realise. Yeah. And then it was funny because she was saying that one of her clients was getting married. I didn't know it was her. Her yeah. other British client her as well. Her other British client. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so weird. It was so weird. But anyway, anyway, we digress. <laughs> so yeah, I use Etsy a lot for my wedding. So I just love Etsy. I love all the small businesses. I love all the unique stuff on there. Mm. And because I like Etsy, I like Etsy. I was like, oh, I want to invest in Etsy. No mm. research. Just because I like it. I like it. It did well mm. for my wedding. So I put some money in there, bought some shares. And then I kid you not, the next month, the shares went down. And if I was still the investor that I am right now, I would have just left it. I would have just left it, you know, mm. ride the waves and stock market. But no, I saw the red, I saw the negative and I sold. So I actually made a loss. Yeah. And that's a mistake because like, it's very emotional. Like mm -hmm. I was very emotionally invested in Etsy because I like the company. Yeah. So for it to go down, I felt like, oh no, like I don't want Etsy to go down. I need to sell. Like, I'm, I'm losing money, blah, blah, blah. But I wasn't actually losing money until I sold. So I did yeah. actually lose money. Yeah. So that was a mistake for me. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting because especially with like many of us, we're already scared to start investing mm. because we feel like we're gonna lose money. Yeah. But then most people who do lose money, the reason why they do it is because 
they let their emotions get the better of them. Yeah, literally like I did. Yeah, I just find it funny now, to be honest. <laughs> and also I want to share because there could be some of you who are ready to invest or yeah. investing. And yeah, it happens to us who have done investing for a while. So yeah, yeah definitely yeah. happens. And obviously we're not financial advisors, so no. we're not giving financial advice. But I think one thing that I always say, and I will always say to my clients, you have to know what you're investing for because that will help you to understand, okay, what do you now want to invest in? Yeah. Like, I am the type of person that now that I've done the work, I realize that sometimes there's certain companies that I just won't invest in yeah. because it doesn't align with like what I'm working towards or my yeah. values yeah. and the way I like, the how comfortable I am with taking risk. So it's really important to do that work yeah. as well. I don't know if you've got like similar views. Yeah, definitely. Like and also do your research. <laughs> <laughs> don't just invest just because you like it actually do some research behind mm -hmm. it but yes it's i do really try to invest within my values as well yeah. and like i don't invest in certain companies because of that or i don't do certain types of investing um because when i don't understand it like crypto for example i don't really do that don't really understand it that much mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it doesn't really align with me as a person um so yeah it's more about finding a way to invest that you feel comfortable doing and also weighing out what your risk attitude is yeah 100%. Okay, so my third mistake is I think I was too restrictive when it came to trying to save money and then eventually overpay on my debt. And what I mean by this is when I started learning about, you know, personal finance and what to do with like money management and how to save, I thought that I had to cut back on everything. Mm -hmm. Like I had to just stay at home save that money, overpay my debt, and then that was it. And I think because there are some influencers that will tell you, like, you basically need to eat beans and rice and things like that. And so I thought, okay, this is what I had to do. But I got to a point where because I'm such a natural spender, I then had the urge mm. to spend even more money. So it didn't help me. So I think what I realized is that it's so important to have a balance. And yes, there are gonna be times where you may decide to save more or you may need to overpay on your debt, but it doesn't mean that you have to completely restrict yourself when it comes to your spending. Yeah. I don't know if you had any thoughts. No, I 100% like agree. That. Like. I think you were mentioning it felt like a crash diet. Right? Yeah, it literally yeah. felt like a crash diet yeah. where you cut yourself from everything. Yeah. And I've tried to do that as well in the past where you're like, oh, I'm gonna go on this juice diet oh, or something. You cut yourself off, but then after like a couple of days, it's like you're just binging more and yeah. you eat more than you were supposed to and yeah. it's like you're in a worse position exactly. than before the same happens with spending at least for me yeah. so i've realized that balance is key yeah 100%. and it doesn't actually fix the problem no exactly like just by cutting exactly. something off and being like yes i'm gonna cut that out like you were saying with your diet you yeah. can do like for example if you say i'm gonna cut out all carbs yeah. really if you're eating carbs like i do yeah. cutting out carbs oh, that's not gonna do exactly. anything It'll probably work for a week, two weeks, yeah. but then you'll be out there eating the pasta, the bread, Honestly, everything. The pizza, everything. <laughs> everything, everything, right? So yeah, I totally agree with you. It is about having a balance because you know what? You can pay off your debt and still enjoy your life. Yeah. Like you don't need to yeah. be miserable paying off debt. You can still be happy and have a joyful life. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I got to a point where I was putting just over six I was paying I was overpaying my debt by about 600 pounds. Oh. I also was still paying off the car and that was about, that was over 250 pounds. Wow. And at the same time, like I was still going out, like I was still going to networking events. I was yeah. still doing things, yeah. but it didn't mean that it was at the detriment of all my spending. I may have reduced it slightly, yeah. but it doesn't mean that I have to, you know, cut back on everything. Yeah, exactly. So I think that was one of the, one that mistake that I made that, you know, it helped me to learn though, because then I realized what actually worked well for me. Yeah. And it got me to really go and think about the root cause and yes. understand like, why was I actually overspending in the first place? Yeah. So That's yeah, true. it was a mistake, but it was also helpful. Yeah, it sounds like you learned a lot from that mistake. Yeah, definitely. So are there any key learnings maybe that you may want to share with the audience just about like your money journey uh, is there anything just on your mind? Any wisdom that you might want to give? Okay, um, I mean, my only wisdom is um, not financial advice, but get investing. <laughs> 
Don't delay it. As soon as you're in a financial position to start investing, start investing in the stock market, make your money work for you and work harder for you without you having to. What about you? So I think one wisdom I would give is very, is very similar, but it would be to really be clear on your why. Like if you know you're in a position where you're trying to save for certain things or you want to now start investing, just be very clear on what's the, what that's for. Are you trying to think about retirement? Are you trying to think about things like financial independence? Are you trying to save up for your first house deposit? Be very clear because that will then ground you when distractions come or when you see people talking about like this new hot stock and you're thinking mm. oh should I be investing in this company mm. you'll then be going back to your goals or if you're really trying to save for a house deposit mm. but then someone tells you like oh we need to really go on holiday what you'll then need to think about is what do you really value at that point do you value the holiday more and you go on the holiday or do you value the house deposit more and you would rather sacrifice the holiday for one year and get the house deposit. There isn't a wrong or right answer. It just really depends on what's more important to you. You may feel like actually you really want to have the experience and then save for the house deposit. Or you may think that actually I want to save for the house deposit and get that done and then go on the holiday. So really just think about your why, what's important for you, what do you value? And that will then have an impact on how you spend that money too. Great advice, Veronia. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Ange, for joining me on my channel. It's so how can people connect with you, get to know you? Wonderful. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at, at the Growth Corner UK, or you can find my podcast, Building Wealth for Women, on Apple and Spotify. Fabulous. And if you're maybe looking for more one-on-one -on -one support when it comes to managing your money better, especially when you're trying to save a lot more money, that is something that I offer. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching so you can book a free call just to find out more about working with me. And if you want to find more about what Angie's doing with her work as well, definitely make sure you follow her on Instagram because she will talk about everything, especially when it comes to do with investing. That's so, my jam. Yes. <laughs> so thanks so much, guys. And if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. And let us know in the comments, what are your biggest money mistakes? I do post every Tuesday. So if you would like to know more, then of course you can subscribe to my channel. And we will see you guys. No, I will see you guys. She will be back soon. Be but back. I will see you guys <laughs> next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.